2 is about brief description of about the instrumentation part of a photoelectron spectrometer. This picture shows a typical XPS instrument. The main components are sources for X-ray for XPS, source of UV for UV photoelectron spectrometer and an electron analyzer. Generally, they look like a hemisphere and a stainless steel made ultra high vacuum chamber to house sample and many other components. Now, let us discuss about the sources. Generally, gas discharge lamps of inert gases are used for uh, ultraviolet sources. Helium-1 line has energy of 21.2 EV and Helium-2 line has energy of 40.8 EV. Neon gas is also used which produces Neon-1 line which has an energy of 16.7 EV and also Krypton and other inert gases can be also used. The most common one is helium coal cathode discharge lamps. In helium coal cathode discharge lamps, uh, they are produced, they produce two prominent lines. One is from the neutralized atoms, those are called uh, helium-1 emission and the light emitted by singly ionized atoms are called helium-2 lines. For X-ray source, we generally use characteristic X-rays from different metallic anodes okay and mostly uh, magnesium and aluminium these two anodes are used they have an energy range within 1500 ev and this range is called the soft x-ray range two types of x-ray sources we will discuss here one is the twin anode or dual anode sources so in twin anode or dual anode sources we have two metal anodes magnesium and aluminium and they can be used one at a time. The basic operation principle of X-ray generation is very simple that from a filament electrons are produced and they target on the metallic anode which causes excitation in the core levels and during the relative decay, radiative decay of excited electrons they emit characteristic X-ray of the anode. Now, if you look at the characteristic X-ray range, they contain a broad range of wavelengths of X-ray where K alpha and K beta, these two lines are mostly prominent. So due to this broad range of um, wavelengths in nature, the twin anodes sometimes produce um, ghost peaks and the backing radiation which is referred as Bremsstrahlung. For narrow or wavelength selected X-ray radiation, we use monochromators. In monochromatization process, what happens? We use quartz crystals to choose a particular wavelength from the characteristic X-ray uh, broad range to shine on the sample. The principle of Bragg's diffraction applies here. The X-ray source, the crystals and the sample all align in a Rowland's circle. You can refer the reading materials to learn, bit, to learn more about this process. Now the third part, the costliest part of the spectrometer is the electron energy analyzer. There are different kinds of analyzers and the mostly used one is the concentric hemispherical analyzer. Okay. The basic operation principle of a hemispherical analyzer we discuss now. What we do, we apply potential difference between the hemispheres, the outer hemispheres and the inner hemispheres that allows only electrons with specific kinetic energies to make it to the electron detector. So varying this potential difference between inner and outer circles of these hemispheres, we can select the energy ranges and then from the detector the signals are identified by the uh, computer and it calculates the binding energy accordingly.